Expose the things that limit you spiritually. When you expose the things that limit you spiritually, then Satan does not have legal rights upon you anymore. In the book of Psalms, chapter 51, we see David exposing the things that limited him, and he was blessed. When he exposed things from his past, he knew that God would come and give him strength. David said to the Lord, Do not comfort me if you don't cleanse me first. As Christians, we have to know that the flesh has to be humbled. And the question is how? You have to know that when your pride is getting hurt, that is when you are getting humbled. Because of the spirit of pride in people, they do not like to expose themselves. It is because of their ego. The ego prevents people from confessing. The Bible says in Psalm 51, 5, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. This is what we have inherited. Because we have a sinful nature, we have the tendency to hide our sin. When Adam was questioned by God, he blamed everything on his wife, and his wife blamed everything on the snake. No one took the responsibility even though God was giving them the opportunity to fix the mistake. We have to know as Christians that gold has to go through the fiery furnace of humbleness. When you expose the problem, Satan has no legal rights upon you. We must know that the problem is the darkness. When the problem is brought out into the light, then the problem becomes light. The problem continues when it remains in darkness, but when we humble ourselves and we bring the situation into the light, that's when God is able to give us our requests. That is why in the prayer line of our ministry, many receive. Those that bring the problem into the light are the ones that receive. When we expose whatever is hidden in darkness, that is when the enemy is humiliated. All the heroes of faith expose the weaknesses. To Peter, Jesus said, Get behind me, Satan. To Moses, he said, Because you did not follow my instruction, you will not inherit the promised land. To David, God sent his prophet to tell him it was not good behavior as a king to do what you did to Uriah's wife. And we know as Christians that King David accepted the correction and confessed his mistake to God and received his forgiveness. Because he knew that only Jesus is the problem solver of his situation. Forgiveness is not just a point of contact with God, but the bridge that connects us with God. Perfect people do not exist upon this earth. Only Jesus was perfect, and everything he did, whatever he said, was perfect. We are responsible to follow him to the end. The Bible says in Titus 2.15, these then are the things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Apostle Paul tells his leader to rebuke with all authority. When you rebuke by the Holy Spirit, it brings blessings. But when you rebuke by the flesh, it brings strife. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4, 2-3, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage. With great patience and careful instruction, but the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Those who do not accept correction go to churches without sound doctrine and follow their own lusts. They do not want to change. They want to hear what they want to hear. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5.20, them that sin rebuke before all, that others may fear. In the scripture, it is important to understand that rebuke should be done before all the believers of the church. Because if the pastor does not rebuke and say what needs to be done, then the whole congregation will be contaminated with the same sin. You must know as a Christian that, that whatever you hide in your heart one day is going to kill you. If you do not believe me, ask King Saul. Because of his jealousy and bitterness towards David, he made wrong choices against the will of God and against another, anointed man of God. Because of this, he was no longer under God's protection and lost his life. You cannot reach for a higher spiritual level if you do not empty yourself of the past. Remember the story of Joseph. The Lord brought him to a place of promotion 
But in that place, Potiphar's wife was waiting for him. Joseph encountered the spirit of temptation in the place of promotion. Potiphar's house was his promotion, but not his reward, because after that the prison followed until he arrived at the throne of Pharaoh. Because of all the things he went through, God prepared him to help the people of Egypt in the time of famine. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 9, For well, because of these surpassing great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. The thorn in Apostle Paul's side was the method God used to keep his servant humble. The problem that we face puts us in a position where we need to be constantly in prayer. If you do not have the strength to expose your sin, then you have pride. When your pride gets hurt, that's when humbleness, healing, and freedom comes. Correction and confession makes our future strong. So now do it publicly so the enemy does not have legal rights on you. Say with me, the Bible is my correction. You have to know that the crisis that you are facing as a Christian is around you, not inside of you. If you allow Satan to bring crisis to your heart, that is the problem. Bring Christ's peace in your heart. Take control of your situation. And if you cannot bring peace because of the crisis, then keep yourself cool and calm. If you cannot handle the situation that you find yourself in, then keep your heart in peace. Do not allow the problem on the outside to affect you. That is where you see the difference between Christians and the people of the world. Remember, it is only when you expose your weaknesses that the Lord comes and gives you strength. Pray now with Apostle John. Father God, I come humbly before you today to choose you as my only Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of my sins, known or unknown. I believe by faith your Son Jesus Christ died on the cross to save me, from Satan, sin, and death. Please wash me in your precious blood. Cleanse me and make me whole. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This teaching is also available on our website at www.zavarasministries.org under Sermons, Divine Visions. You can take notes and read it at your own pace. Stay blessed, Apostle John Zavlaris.